Hello and welcome to Mr. Cortez Robotics. I am Mr. Cortez and I'm going to walk you through programming a robot like this one. And this robot is called the Clamp, inspired by Ben Lippers. And I know a lot of teams are building something similar to this because when he did his reveal video, if you haven't seen that, you need to check it out. Just look up Ben Lippers 24 hour reveal. Uh, he was actually able to clear the field uh, with a robot like this. Uh, the robot is extremely simple, and I would uh, definitely recommend it to beginner teams. So this robot only has two subsystems, a drivetrain and an arm. And the beauty about this robot is because it is so simple, it's uh, simple to build and simple to program. So that's why I definitely recommend it for beginners. Um, it does only need two functions, and that is to drive and to have the arm move up and down. It moves up to collect the balls, down to hold them, and it also moves up in order to complete a hang. So I know a lot of teams have uh, built something like this and are probably wondering how they can program it. My goal is to walk you through the most simple programming and then uh, take you up to a bit more of an advanced concept that will help you become more accurate and more efficient um, as you're playing. And when I say you, I mean the kids. <laughs> so uh, I hope, uh, your team is watching this or your kiddos are watching this so that they're understanding these concepts and following along with me. So what I've done prior to this video is set up the ports on each of the um, motors from the robot. And so we have our drivetrain on one and seven and we just followed that from the left motor on one, the right motor on seven. The arm uh, is a motor group and we have uh, one arm coming to two and the other arm coming to 10. Uh, one thing about this is you'll notice that I reversed uh, the right motor, and that is because uh, the motors need to spin in opposite directions as they are facing each other. In order to successfully work, we added a touch LED, and we added a controller. Now, within the controller, um, once you add it, you can click on this joystick, and it'll toggle through four different driver modes that you're, you guys can choose, and I recommend going through all four and uh, finding which one works out best for you. Uh, I do teach this as a class, and I find that most of my students do like a split arcade. With split arcade, uh, you move forward and reverse with the A axis of the controller, and you turn left and right with the C axis. Uh, another popular one is the left driver control mode. And so with the left joystick, you can go forward, back, left and right, and teams do like this because that frees up your thumb to maybe use the F controls and uh, you can use your other fingers on the L and R. But because the uh, simplicity of this robot, I wouldn't worry about that and I'd just choose whatever works best for you. And so we're just going to go ahead and put a uh, split arcade. And that is uh, that as far as adding the devices to your controller. We have a when started, when R up is pressed, and when R down is pressed for now. Now these are all events and you just come to the events tab and uh, you drag those on out like so. Okay, and we're only going to be using the R up and R down uh, for right now. So when start, you want to set a couple, um, uh, your, your arms brakes, your arms velocity and your arms torque. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out Set your velocity, torque, and your brakes. So we can set these to 100, and what that'll do is that'll crank the juice on the motors to go at a 100% velocity. Uh, if you don't use these blocks, it actually defaults to 50% velocity. And for our brakes or our stopping, we're gonna use a hold. And the reason we want the hold is so that when this comes back to hang, uh, you want to prevent this from happening. And that's your arm from hanging. The other brake options do not hold. So you wanna use a hold. Okay, so the most simple way to do this is spinning those arms in the direction that you want them to. So for when I press R up, I'm gonna spin in reverse, which will make my motors come back. In this case, my arm will go up. 
And when I press R down, I want them to spin forward. However, if I were to tap these right now, the arm will just spin nonstop because you didn't put a parameter. You didn't say how much you want it to spin or for how long. So we're going to do just that. We're going to use a control and we're going to wait until we're going to use an operator, not, and we're going to use sensing, controller sensing. And so we're going to wait until our buttons are not pressed. So here's one for R up, wait until R up is not pressed. And all I did was copy paste that because all we need is an R down. So wait until R up is not pressed. Wait until R down is not pressed. Wait until they are released. So you spin and wait until it is no longer pressed. Spin and wait is, until it is no longer pressed. Then what action or behavior do we want it to do? We want the motors to stop when it is no longer pressed. Okay, so we're gonna download that into our robot. And now when I run that, I can drive forward, reverse, uh, right, and left. There's some friction going on with the cable management. But anyways, R up makes my arm go up, R down makes my arm go down. And you could effectively go compete with a program like this one right now. Just, uh, you can go out there and your robot's ready to go, sort of. You could stop here, but I'd like to go into a bit more of advanced concepts. So there is a couple of flaws with this program, or just one uh, particular one, and that is the range of motion. So the range of motion is how much a robot arm can spin before it stops on something. Like for this case, the brain would stop it right here. Or if we're going the opposite direction, it can come down and you can keep spinning and it'll lift your wheels. So right now this battery is a little bit low, so it won't pick up all the way, but I'll show you what I mean. So if I come down, you'll see that my wheels are lifted. They are off the ground. And so you wanna prevent yourself from doing that or your kids from doing that while they're driving, right? For this, we're gonna use a range of motion and we want the range of motion to be maybe from here and then when it goes back, well, we'll have the manual control. We just don't really want it going under because it'll lift up your wheels. So to do this, we're going to have to um, set our arm position. And we're going to come to our motion and we're going to set arm position to zero degrees. What this means is you're identifying the position of your arm as something. So this can be zero or this can be zero. It'll be zero wherever the robot arm is when the program starts, as it says right here. So when it starts, set it to zero. So it could be here, it could be here. And so often the kids can pick it up and put it right above the floor. So it'll go low enough, but it'll never touch the floor. And that's the goal here. And I find that spinning the arms in reverse, uh, maybe half a turn, will get you just where you want to be. Then you can use your R down button and instead of spinning and holding it down and having that control, you wanna just tap it and bring it right back to that starting position, right back to that zero position. And so we'll do spin arm to position zero. So let's go ahead and download that now. And I'm gonna run it right here so you can see a bit of an exaggeration. So, when I push R up, my arm will go up. And when I push R down, it'll just go to zero. Now I'll tap it and it does not go any lower than that. So it goes up half a turn and it comes down. And that will prevent you from going below and picking up those wheels, preventing you from driving. So you'll just stop right where you want it to stop. Now, this is also a good place uh, where you can effectively compete. However, in order for your uh, your hang, you'd have to tap that a couple of half turns until you get to where you want. We don't want that, right? So we're gonna come back to our zero position. Uh, what we can do for this is now use that uh, push L up to spin until we want it to be at a good spot so that we can align ourselves better. So what I would do here is give myself that uh, manual control using my left buttons. 
And this is so you can adjust yourself to where you want to be. And so I'm gonna do L up and L down. Now I know this is more buttons, but uh, your kiddos will only use these buttons uh, to adjust themselves in proper position to hang. So we're going to use similar code to what we had before, where we spin our motor until we let go. And we'll use the wait until, and we'll say it is no longer pressed. And then stop the motor. So we'll copy paste that. And so uh, I need to change that to L up and L down. Okay, so I'm gonna download that and I'm gonna run that program. So now, when we push R up, we can come down to the zero position and that'll work effectively collecting these balls. It's a good spot. You would be able to uh, go up and then gonna collect the balls and then bring them down and you can drive with them, right? So that's good. And now when you're ready to hang, instead of sitting here tapping, you can just use these to give yourself that manual control, that same manual control that uh, we once had, but now we're just gonna use this to align ourselves to hang and to find that perfect position. Now, maybe you want to abort, uh, maybe something went wrong, maybe something broke or whatever, and you wanna get back to that zero position, you can always do that by pushing your R down and you're back at your zero position. So that's all I have for the clamp. I hope this was useful. If uh, you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can leave any comments and I will try to get back to everybody. Uh, I hope this helps. Have yourself a great one. Until next time, I'm Mr. Cortez. Adios.